Hello, and welcome to the uh, Master's in Social Work Pathway Program Library Research video. Um, I will be focusing on online resources, but any Master's in Social Work student can make use of this information. My name is Brent Singleton. I'm the library liaison to the Social Work or the School of Social Work here at CSUSB. And what I'm going to be covering today is finding books and peer reviewed articles, as well as social work. Um, master's theses, um, as well as how to get research support. Okay, so I'm right here on the library homepage currently. Um, perhaps you haven't been to this particular page, but you can get to the campus homepage. I'm going to back up one level. So let's say you get to the campus homepage and you want to find a library. We're right up here in the top navigation. So you just click library, takes you to where we were a moment ago. Now there's a lot going on in the library web page, as you'll notice. Um, we're really going to focus on a couple of places. We're going to focus here on OneSearch, uh, choose a database, um, some help getting library support for your research there, and we'll dip a little bit into library guides. But the rest of it you can explore on your own. Um, so what is OneSearch? We've got this big old box up here, OneSearch. Well, what we use OneSearch for, you can use it for several things. Um, one is the place you look to see what books we have. Whether it's physical books or ebooks, electronic books, you use OneSearch. You can also search for articles in OneSearch, basically from a multidisciplinary perspective, cross disciplinary perspective. Um, we have social work specific databases, which I will show a little bit later, but you can do your article research um, in, in OneSearch and sort of look across disciplines. So you might get a little bit of psychology, a little bit of social work, a little bit of uh, medical. Uh, uh, literature, depending on what your topic is. So um, let's start out with, let's say we wanted to look for books that we uh, have on palliative social work. So you might type in something like this. Got to spell it right. Let me try to get it spelled correctly. I think that's right. Um, and I am recording this live in one shot. So there may be some hiccups along the way, but we should be okay. So when I put my topic in, in this case, palliative social work, you get these options. Like, what do you want to search? You want to search everything, which would be all of these categories. You can search just for articles, or you can search for just for books and media we have here at CSUSB. We have this other category for all CSU, but that only applies to if you were dealing with physical books. But when you want to know what books we have, our eBooks, this is where you're going to want to look. Um, so I'm going to click on this option, Books and Media at CSUSB. It's going to do the search for us. And you get a result of 91 hits. Okay, that's not bad. Um, let's say we were going through this um, list of books and social work wasn't coming up as a phrase, right? So what this is doing is looking for the word palliative, the word social, and the word work anywhere in a record. So in the title, the description, the chapter headings, what that those kind of places. So they don't have to have any relation to one another. So it's not necessarily looking for things that say social work specifically. It just has these words in there. So it could be palliative care and social implications of a work environment or something like that. Um, so those words don't have to be together. So let's say we wanted to make sure that it said social work. One thing you could do is phrase search. And that's by using these quote marks around the phrase that you want to make sure is those two words, in this case, social work together, right? So now anything that comes up has to have the, the phrase social work. So this should shrink our results because we're get, putting more restrictions on the search. So we currently have 91. And when I run the search now, it drops down to 46. So basically half, but that's okay. Now we know these, these articles, or not these articles, these books have the phrase social work in it as well as palliative. So as we're going through this list, if we see a, a title that looks interesting to us, like this one, Palliative Care, Social Work and um, Service Users, um, if you wanna know a little bit more about a given title, we can always click on that title and it will tell us um, some more information. In this case, here's the contents, meaning these are the chapters that are in this particular book. There's also, a, in, this short, in this case, a short summary. Sometimes it's longer than this. So there's a summary of what the book's about. Here are some subjects that are covered in this book. 
So by clicking on the title, we can be a little bit more sure if this particular book is going to be useful for us. Okay. So let's say, yeah, let's go back to the homepage. Let's say, yeah, this one looks really good. I like it. I clicked on the, uh, the title and looked at, you know, what, what's going on in this book. If we want to actually see the online book, we click here where it says available online. So um, our most popular ebook vendor is ProQuest ebook central. So you'll see this one quite often. Um, what happens is I'll go ahead and click on this link. Um, most of our databases allow you to log straight in. Um, they take you straight to whatever you clicked on. I am logged in right now, so it took me straight to this book. But if I weren't logged in, it would ask me to log in at that point. And that'd be the first time um, in our session that it asks you to log in. So you, you can search one search, and that's fine until you get to the point where you're actually trying to access a resource, and then it will ask you to log in. But because I'm already logged in, it didn't do that. So what we hear, we're here at the landing page of this book. Um, you notice here you have some different options. It says download book, which does not work. Um, this is actually your download option here. So because of copyright restrictions, in this case, you get 81 pages that you can download. And that means down here, when you're looking at these various chapters, you can download a PDF for those given sections um, and even subsections here in this case. Um, all to the, that adds up to 81. Now, if that is an 81 page restriction, um, for this particular session, you can come back, you know, the next day if you need more pages and, and get additional pages. But at one shot, you can't download the entire book, even though this button's here. You download portion, in this case, up to 81 pages. It, um, that number is based upon the, the like 15% of the pages of any given document. So this one adds up to 81. But if you go to a different book, this may add up to a higher number or a lower number. So I could go over here and click on a chapter and see what I want to see. Um, I could also just start from the beginning, click read online and scroll down through the book or use these arrows to forward, go forward, whatever your preference is. You can also search within the book. So let's say I only want to know about stuff that's talking about death specifically. And what it does is tell you over here, based upon this little blue um, uh, marking here, how much uh, this section talks about death in this case. So these two parts look like they covered it quite, quite well. I mean, we're talking about palliative care, so that's not unusual. So these are the two areas you're gonna wanna focus on. This sometimes highlights a little bit better in different books. If there's more chapters in this case, there's only like these two major, three major chapters. So it really doesn't look as, uh, as different. So the one cool thing is though, when you click on the uh, little, arrow here, it'll tell you all the results where your term appears. So I can go to this page and my term is highlighted and go down here, pick a different page. And if I scroll down, it'll show my term highlighted again. So it just tells you all the instances of where your word is used. So it's kind of easy to just jump through a document or in this case, a book very quickly by doing a search on the term that you're interested in and then just clicking on the results page by page and then seeing where your term is used in context. Um, and then may or may not be useful for you, but it's, that's that's the way you would do it. All right. <clears throat> There's a lot more going on up here. There's a lot of options that you can explore on how to print and save and, and highlight. Um, I'm going to leave that for you um, to explore on your own. And I'm going to back out to where we were a moment ago. Um, so that's pretty much finding books when you're dealing with online books, right? Um, when you see them here. Now, I did want, I did not do what I wanted to make sure I show you because these were all ebooks from the jump. Um, but if you wanted to limit to ebooks and because you don't want to see physical books, so like this is a physical book, it shows that it's on the third floor here. It's paper, um, paperback book. You can check off this box here available online. And then now you're only dealing with all ebooks. So we're down to 30 books now, but you don't see the ones that are paper and with a location like third floor or what have you. These are all um, electronic books available from uh, home, work, wherever you have internet access. Now, if I wanted to do continue doing searches, I could cl click here where it says keep filters active. And now any additional searches will also limit to, in this case, online books only. So you won't have to click um, uh, to keep clicking that button. You can just lock it 
all subsequent searches are going to limit to available online. Okay. Now let's go down a little ways here. And um, let's see here. Um, yeah, actually, I think we're done looking at books. So um, that's pretty much it. It's pretty easy to look for ebooks because you're only going one place. That's one search limited to books and media CSUSB. Put your search in, you get your results, see something you like, click on available online, and just kind of do what we had done uh, previously. Um, here we go. Let's now change to looking for articles in one search. All right, it's very simple. All we got to do is ch change from books and media up here to articles. We don't even have to change our search. So I'm going to go ahead and hit articles. Um, and notice we have a lot more results, 5,000. There are a lot more articles written in the world than there are books. So you, you're going to tend to get a lot more results when you do a, an article search versus a book search. Um, and you can get a lot more specific with articles too. Um, so this is a relatively general search, palliative social work. With articles, we can get into the nitty gritty of very specific, um, like this one, core competencies. Um, we could add that and see how many articles talk about the core competencies of palliative care and social work. Um, like in the other database where we limited it to available online, what we wanna do in this database instead of doing that is limit it to peer reviewed journal articles. When you're in graduate work or even undergraduate work, most of the time your professors want you to be using peer-reviewed journal articles. So we're going to check that off and we're going to um, apply the filters. And then just like I said before, when we kept the available online for the books, um, uh, we locked it in. We could do the same here with the peer review. So that way any subsequent searches will be limited to peer review automatically. Now, when I limited it, notice I dropped about 600 results off, but there's still almost 4,400 results. So there's still tons and tons to, to look through here. Um, I wouldn't use, there was this available online. Don't use that because most of this stuff is online. And if it isn't, I'm going to show you a way to look for it. By doing that, um, when you're looking for articles, it's not as effective as when you're looking for books. Because when you're looking for books and you're in the pathway program, you have no access to the campus, you just want ebooks, you're golden. In here, you can order up stuff that will be basically either scanned in or sent to, you, sent to you digitally if we don't have it. So you want to make sure you get the full results so that you're able to order them and you get them very quickly. So you don't have to you know, worry about you know, taking a week or two to get these things. They come within um, you know, oftentimes a few hours, but at most 24 hours. So as we're going through our, our list of hits here, these are articles now, once again, we can do the same thing we did when we were looking for books. So I look at this title and I go, it looks good, but I'm not 100% sure what this thing's about. I can always click on the title and it's gonna give me more information, just like what we did when we were in the books. So in this case, you have the summary or abstract. So this is describing this seven or eight page article in one paragraph. So we can get an idea, is this thing gonna be uh, useful for me? What did they do in this? And you can see here that they, um, they're talking about the, the amount of competencies they looked at and how they were looking at it. So there's sort of their methodology. So you get a flavor for what this article is about without actually reading it first. So sometimes you'll get through an eight page article and go, wow, that wasn't what I expected at all. I wasted my time. Well, in this case, you could actually get a little head start by looking at the abstract or summary and seeing if this article is probably going to be useful for you. Okay. So, um, what you see here is a multiplicity of things that tell you something is online. I don't know why this database does this, but it's a little weird. Um, you have it says view online, available online, uh, full text available, get PDF. All that means in every case is that this thing is available online. Um, if I click here, it's going to do like we did when we looked at the book. It's going to show me the database that it's in, and then I'll click on it at that point right here in the case is Taylor and Francis is one of the publishers. But if you click on like get PDF or view online, it actually takes you straight to the article. So you don't do that extra step. So let's see, it's right there. So I didn't have to click on Taylor and Francis or anything like that. Or in this case, yeah, uh, Taylor and Francis, it pops right up. So that's the difference. Um, but I don't know why some say get PDF or view online and some just full text available <laughs> or some all three. Um, but nonetheless, if it has any of these three indicators on there, the full text is available and just click on one. Quickest way is through get uh, view online or get PDF. 
Okay. And so it took us to uh, this, this article. Just want to always like to point out one thing. Um, when you're citing an APA citation style, at the end of an electronic journal article uh, citation, you need to list the DOI, which is the digital object identifier, which is the unique number for the article. So in this case, you can see it's right here listed. Um, but also on the first page of any given article, you'll either see it in the header, like it is in this one, or down in the footer. So in this case, we just saw it was in the header. So if you're ever looking for it, there's always multiple places where it can be found, um, usually on the front page of the article itself. Um, if we click on the title again, where we were looking at the um, description, oftentimes if you scroll down far enough, you'll also see the DOI is available there. So the DOI, Digital Object Identifier, is available at different points for you to um, either copy and paste or keep note of. Um, okay. So what happens when you see something like this, request item from other libraries? You don't see view online. You don't see get PDF. You don't see full text available, any of those indicators. What you're going to want to do is click here where it says request this item from other libraries. Like I mentioned a moment ago, um, if we don't have it, like get PDF, we can order it from another library and get it pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and click on that. Um, and what it's telling you here is, first of all, before we click on this sign in to request this item from another library, always check here where it says get a free version from Google Scholar. Sometimes these articles are available, freely available on the internet in Google Scholar even though they're not in our database, OneSearch. So we click on it, and if it were available, what you would see is an, an, a link here that says PDF or HTML, some indicator of the full text being available. In this case, it's not there. What we're getting is the abstract um, down here and the citation information. But that's OK, because we do have this option. But I always check there first, because then you get it immediately. But if, if it's not in Google Scholar, go here to where it says Please sign in to request option, see request options, and we'll go ahead and log in. And what you'll see now once you're logged in is request a digital copy. So it's delivery says an estimated 24 hours. That's at the real far end of things. Um, generally, like I said, if you order it in the morning, you'll probably have it that, that afternoon. So what all it wants you to do is confirm your email. If, if you don't use your campus email, you don't check your campus email, you can change that so that it goes to an email that you're going to check. Because what's going to happen is when this article is available, you will get an email telling you to log back in the system. And you'll go to your account and you go to my requests. I don't have anything right now, but this is where it would be. And you'd have a PDF version of your, um, your article there. Okay. So let me go back to my search. <clears throat> okay, it just killed everything. <laughs> it is live, folks. Um, oh, there it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, so anything we don't have, you can get real quickly by, by requesting it through um, uh, what we call interlibrary loan or CSU plus. And because your your remote, your online program doesn't matter since this is delivered electronically. So you don't have to come to campus or anything like that. Okay. Now, almost all of our databases allow you to get a quick citation um, of, of this given item. So in this case, you'll see like the little quote marks here, citation, or if I go back a level to the results list, um, you'll see it uh, just over here, there's little quote marks. You can always click on that to get a quick and dirty, um, in this case, APA is usually what social work uses, and that's the default here, um, a quick and dirty citation of this particular article. But beware, right here it says automatically generated citations may contain errors, and they almost always do. Um, not a lot, so I can copy this or click here and paste it into my paper and just make any changes that there needs to be made. In this case, what changes would need to be made is they've, um, and this is often a, a common problem with uh, citation generators, is the title is in, in, in caps. Everything's in caps, and that shouldn't be the case in APA. It should be the first word and all proper nouns um, are capitalized. In this case, the whole title is capitalized, so that's incorrect. You'd have to go back and fix that. But nonetheless, you've 
taken all this information and quickly put it into your paper. So that's not saying much to have to um, just make a couple of corrections. Like I mentioned before, here's the DOI located at the end of the, um, the article. In this case, it was inserted for you. Um, you don't have to look for it, but just noting that it does have to be on any electronic journal citation that you put in APA. Okay. So that is what OneSearch is all about. It's about finding books, electronic or print, and finding articles across multidisciplinary, um, um, against, multi against uh, uh, looking for articles in, uh, in multiple disciplines. Um, so we do have social work specific databases. If we go here under choose a database, we have about 300 databases we subscribe to, and we have the 300 broken down here by discipline. So we do have a, a social work category. And here are the databases for social work. Social Services Abstracts, which is the number one database for um, social work because it's the largest, um, and it has unlimited users. Social Work Abstracts is okay, but it's smaller and it's limited to only four users at a time. So most people end up using Social Services Abstracts. Then we have a couple of allied databases like PsychInfo. Oftentimes, if you're doing anything related to mental health, you'll want to check PsychInfo as well. Now, why would I want to use this instead of just sticking with OneSearch? Well, like I mentioned before, OneSearch is multidisciplinary. You're getting the psychology journal, the medical journals, the social work journals, sociology journals, history journals, any kind of journals. Now, sometimes when you're doing your master's thesis or just doing coursework, your professors want you to use what we call the social services or social work um, literature, meaning these are things written by professionals doing like the PhDs, like your professors, PhDs in social work. So this is coming from the social work perspective, which has a completely different uh, methodology and view of how things are done than some of the other disciplines like psychology, even though they're allied. So you will, it is important to know where to find the literature from social work perspective. And that's where you'd go here at Social Services Abstracts. In most databases, um, you would just start searching here and you'd be good to go. Um, they've recently changed this database so that it search, searches the title, the abstract, which once again is the description of the um, article, as well as any subject headings for the article. But now it also includes the entire full text of the articles, um, which sounds great, but you end up getting a ton of results no matter what you search. And it's a little bit harder to manipulate. So what I suggest is that you go here to advanced search and change this over here to anywhere except full text. So N-O-F-T. And now it will search those first three places I talked about, like the title, um, abstract, and subject headings, and not the full text. So if your, if your terms that you search on are in the title or the abstract, the article is more likely to be about it than if you just find your terms somewhere in a 30-page article. And that's why you'll get fewer results, but they'll be tend to be more on topic, OK? So let's go ahead and do a search. So let's say what it, let's say I was doing something on the topic of what role do African American grandparents play as caregivers? I'm a slow typer. Bear with me. <laughs> do their grandchildren? And looks good. We have some capitalization issues. Capitalization doesn't matter. I can leave that alone. Um, so normally, if we were like Google searching, we might just type that in. That's my topic. That's my thesis statement for my paper I'm going to do. What is the role? What role do African-American grandparents play as caregivers to their grandchildren? OK, if I go and Google that, I'm going to get results because Google uses what we call natural language. What is natural language? Natural language is how you speak. So I have a question, I type it in, right? You might go to Google, how do I change a tire? How do I, you know, sew a button on a shirt? You just, you type it in exactly how you would think it. Um, in our database, if we do this, we're gonna get no results. Our databases are not natural language. So you have to do a little bit different uh, search strategy, which we call a keyword searching strategy or a key concept searching strategy. So we have to look at our, our our question that we have and break it down into keywords. So what role do, we don't need that. One of the main comp uh, uh, questions is what's the ethnicity of this group we're looking at is in this case, African-American. What 
segment of African Americans are we looking at? Specifically, grandparents. And what do we want the grandparents to be doing? Caregivers. We need to be caregiving. And we don't have to have to their grandchildren because if they're grandparents, they have grandchildren, right? So we can leave that out. So our key concepts in that whole thesis statement of what role do African-American grandparents play as caregivers to their grandchildren is just African-American grandparents, caregivers. And then I can do my search and I get 103, but I also wanna make sure I click off peer review. I could have done it on the last screen, but I'm gonna do it here. Um, Actually, let me just show you real quick. So if I go back to modify the search, you could limit it here um, or you can limit it on the on the subsequent results screen. So we're down to 88 results. OK, no problem. So I want to show you a couple of tricks. In, in one search, I showed you phrase searching. So we wanted to get social work as a phrase. So we put quotes around it. That's one trick. Um, so I'm going to go to modify search here and so when you're dealing with ethnic groups, oftentimes you have various things you could say, right? It could be Hispanic or Latino or Chicano, depending if you're looking at a specific group within uh, uh, Latinos or Hispanics. Um, same thing with African-Americans. So we could look at African-American <clears throat> or black because we don't know what the authors used, what term. So what we use, we, we call this Boolean searching. You don't ever have to remember that again, but I wanted to tell you what it's called. And all it does requires you to do is put your, your synonyms nested in parentheses like we have here and then separated by an or. So I can, we can add more in here. So let's say you were looking at multiple dis, um, uh, uh, ethnicities, you could say like that. Or um, if you were looking, you know, just wanted to look at so basically non-white um, grandparents, caregivers. Um, so it doesn't have to be an exact synonym. It could just be like concepts or synonyms, uh, you know, placeholder that are similar to you. So in this case, the ethnicity of the group. But I'm going to stick with using it as synonyms. So it can be African-American or Black. And then we have, so this should give us uh, more options because you're giving the computer more options. Find the ones that say African-American or they could have Black and they just have to have in common grandparents or caregivers. So when we do the search, we're likely to get more hits. So we went from 88 to 95, so we gained a few, okay? Another trick you can do is what we call stemming or wildcard searching or truncation is generally what we call it as librarians. So for instance, we have grandparents there, but what if it was grandparenting? What if it was grandparental? Um, any of those with different endings, we can use an asterisk here. And now I'll get all of those words that end in those other different, different, different endings. So grandparent, grandparents, grandparenting, grandparental. Same thing with caregiver. What if we want caregiver, caregivers, caregiving, caregive? We can do that there. Now you have to do it where they have the word in common. So you notice I didn't do it here because I would just give you caregiver, caregives, care, um, caregivers. If we want caregiving, there's no E in it, right? So we have to truncate one letter back to get that caregiving aspect in there. Once again, this is a way to expand your search. You're gonna get more results by doing this. This expands our results because we give the computer more options. This expands our results because it gives the computer more options. So now when we click search, we're up to 101. So we started at 88, we made a few changes. So we gained 13 articles. You might go, well, we didn't need 13. We already had 88. Maybe one of those 13 is the best article out there. And you would have missed it had you not tried to look for it in this way, because the, the author maybe used black instead of African-American and boom, you miss it. So that's why you use this kind of thing. It's also good if you're getting too few results, right? If you're getting only like five results instead of 88, let's see how we can expand this. Is there any way to truncate? Is there any way to use Boolean synonyms or, or like concepts and, and do it that way? Okay. Um, but just be careful where you, where you do um, truncate because it does make a difference. Okay. So we have our list here of 101 peer-reviewed articles. And Let's go through these real quickly here. Just like in all the other databases, when we were in one search looking for articles or books, if you want more information, click on the title. Our databases tend to work that same way. You always get more information if you click on the title. Once again, you get the abstract or summary, some of the subject headings that they've given to this particular article, some identifiers, and, and then the citation information. If you go down a little bit further, as usual, you'll find the DOI, like I mentioned before. 
but you do get more information about this article and um and, and and so that helps you like once again not have to read in this case you know an 18 or in this case uh 22 23 page um article and then realize that ah, wasn't quite what i was looking for but you might have found that out if you just looked at the abstract ahead of time so now let's talk about finding these articles full text in the in one search we saw that it said view full text pdf had all those different indicators well we sort of got that same go thing going on here too um this is going to be your preference when you says pdf because you always get that nice clean pdf so if you see that as an option, go ahead and click it. So say number two here, we wanted to see it. We click full text PDF and boom, there it is. And we can go ahead and download it here, print it here, whatever we want to do with it, make it bigger to read it, that kind of thing. Um, they have some other options up here to downloading PDF as well, If um, but you could do it right in the viewer um, um, as well. So it, it's it, either way, whatever your preference is. Um, so let's go back a level. So that's what it looks like when the article is available. You'll just see a link to the full text right under it. But number one, you don't see that. Instead, you see this little icon that says search for full text. So in this case, it's not available. The article is not available through social services abstracts, but we have dozens of databases that supply full text of articles and maybe one of them has it. By clicking on search for full text here, <clears throat> the computer is gonna go ahead and look for it, see if it's available. In this case, it did find it, actually found it in two different databases. So we can go ahead and click on one. I'm going to go ahead and click on Sage. It's just one of our journal providers. And <clears throat> it looks different from when we were in the other database looking at the full text articles. Um, they all look different because they're coming from different publishers. This one is Sage. Sometimes it's Wiley, um, Blackwell, Wiley. Um, it could be um, JSTOR. It could be um, Elsevier, Science Direct. So they all look slightly different, but what you wanna do is look around the screen for the, <clears throat> the link to the PDF like this. And it says PDF, go ahead and click on it. And then there it is, there's our article, okay? And so that's, that's pretty much what that means. Um, and so basically you have three options when you're looking for articles in here. Okay, you're either going to find the full text of it just like this, good to go, quick and easy. If it's not, you'll click here for search for full text. <clears throat> and if it's available through one of our other databases, once again, relatively quick and easy, a couple of clicks and you're at the article. But sometimes you get a, a let's say we, we like this one. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, let's, we want to look at these grandmothers having some some struggles here. Um, with their caregiving for their kid, for their grandchildren. And then we want this article, we can click here for search for full text, <clears throat> just like we did a moment ago. And in this case, just like when we were in one search and we didn't find the article available, this is what it looks like. There's no database listed here. So no um, uh, uh, Sage like we saw in the last one. But just like before, we always wanna check here first because the article might be available immediately by clicking on check and see if Google Scholar. Once again, there's no link to it here. So we go, okay, we're gonna to have to order it again. So just like in the other database in one search, you click here, log in, and we request a digital copy. So it's the exact same process. Even though we're, we're no longer in one search, we're in social services abstracts, the finding of this full text, as well as looking for the requesting a, a digital copy from somewhere else looks exactly the same. So if you can use one database, as far as finding the full text is concerned, you tend to be able to use all the databases because they use the same system here for requesting um, other items, okay? Which is useful, right? Because you know, we used to, in the old days, you had to learn how each one worked and it wasn't fun. Um, just like when we were in one search, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to be able to cite this item there in this database, there's once again, a little quote sign. We can go ahead and click on that. And it again, defaults to APA, which is nice. And we're, we have to deal with the same issues that we were dealing with before. Um, it's saying here, check for accuracy and completeness of your citations. Um, do not trust this hundred percent, but I can copy this real quickly um, by highlighting, oops, or hitting copy. Um, 
And in this case, the same problem we had in the last citation in one search um, is everything is capitalized. And in this case, yes, African American should be capitalized, but caregiving grandmothers and symptoms should not be. So those would have, and, and some others here in the subtitle. So you'd have to fix that up. Notice in this article, there is no DOI at the end of it. <clears throat> this is an article from 2000. DOIs only came about around a decade ago, 12 years ago. So anything prior to that is going to need a URL. Um, so in this case, it, it has already inserted it in there. <clears throat> but you do need to have something at the end indicating that this is it was found electronically. So the DOI says that when you when it has a DOI or this URL um, has it as well. Um, if you if you if for some reason you click on site and it's an older article that doesn't have a DOI and you need a URL to put in there, you can click on the title once again. Once again, when you click on the title, you get more options. And um, what you're going to look for is here, where this is the permalink for a, 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 an R, a, a, um, we call it a permalink because if you use this <clears throat> up here, it doesn't work. This is not a long lasting URL, it's, it's session specific. So this is not what you would want to use for your article. You'd want to copy URL here where it says to make a permanent link um, to this particular article. So that's where you would find it, where it says copy URL. Okay. So that's how you find articles from the social work literature. So we talked about finding books. <clears throat> we talked about finding articles across disciplines, both of those using OneSearch. We went into choose a database, picked social work as a category, chose social services abstracts, <clears throat> and searched specifically within the social work literature. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to the library homepage. And let's talk about finding theses. A lot of people want to find a thesis. What do they look like? You know, what is, what's the formatting? How, how do these work? So from the homepage, where you want to go is this link here that says ScholarWorks. ScholarWorks has a lot of stuff in it, but including our theses. So when you get here to this page, what you're going to do is go under Department, Program, or Office. And it's listed by college. So we're going to go down to College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. <clears throat> and then the School of Social Work. And specifically the Theses, Projects, and Dissertations. And what we have here are our fresh 2024 <clears throat> theses that were um, just done last fall. I'm sorry, last spring. So these are hot off the press. Um, you could choose earlier years. And these are all, this is pretty retrospective. It goes back to, you know, in this case, 30 years. But you can also search in it. You don't want to probably scan or uh, scroll through a thousand theses. You can always say, well, which ones are talking about <clears throat> foster care? Excuse me. And then we have 773 that deal with foster care. And you can tighten that up a little bit so that you're not dealing with um, such a, a large number. Try still quite a bit. Um, so, but you can't hone that down. Just add terms. We still have 539. Just keep adding until you get to where you're, you're interested in. And if you want to see the project, just click on download. And there's your thesis. It's redacted. They get all the signatures out of there, but the entire thesis is there. In this case, it was scanned in. These days, they're born digital, so they look like a, a nice, clean PDF. <clears throat> the older ones we scanned in, so they look a little bit like this. Okay, so that's finding theses. So once again, that's under ScholarWorks, um, Department, go to the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences, School of Social Work, and then, start, and then theses and start searching. Okay, show you a couple of other things. Now we're kind of transitioning from resources to <clears throat> support, how to get help. So we have a library guide section here, which has got some handy dandy stuff in it. It's a lot of different sections here, but you can just go down to the social work one. And there's some things under here you might take a look at in your own time, <clears throat> but social work resources is where you can go to get an overview. Talks about the different databases specific to social work, but it also reviews what I showed you earlier, truncation, exact phrase searching, Boolean logic, and then adding them, putting them all together in one search. So if what I showed you before, you've already forgot how to do it, or you want a refresher, or you need a little bit more time with it, I would go to this page and kind of go through these a little bit slower and see which ones work for you. <clears throat> There's also a tab for finding books, um, finding dissertations like we just did, finding videos, which we haven't shown, but you're welcome to do it, and then other library services. 
Oh, pardon me. I haven't taught in a while, so my voice is giving out on me. Um, all right. So actually, back to um, the main library guides page. One other thing I want to show you is we went to the social work link before, but you also want to try out this maybe this citing and writing link. It has a really cool APA citation guide. <clears throat> talks about how to set up your references in APA, how to do parenthetical references. So what is what do my citations look like within my papers? Um, and then also, if you have to format a paper in APA formatting, which it is, it's not just a citation style, it's also a paper formatting style. This is a guide to set up a template for, for formatting your paper, okay? <clears throat> also in this, this section of uh, citing and writing, is a uh, link to using Zotero and Zotero for Macs. That's a citation um, manager. So if you're like doing a major, like your thesis project across time, you know, months, maybe even a year, you can collect your citations of things that you found that you might want to come back to as Zotero. And this teaches you how to go through it. There's some really cool videos, um, handouts, and Lisa's a really great source if you want to um, track her down for an appointment. Okay. So back to the library homepage, how do you get in touch with a librarian? Well, these are your two options, your best options here. Ask a librarian. Is, I'm not going to click on it because it, it generates a pop-up menu that you won't be able to see because uh, it's a different window. But it defaults to having the um, a chat window. Um, so during normal hours, librarians here from the campus will answer questions. If that closes, then there will be a 24-hour um, chat option, but that's with librarians that are outside of uh, this campus, but they're still real live human beings. It also gives you the email that you can um, email us to. Um, and so there's other ways to sort of like, you know, type in an email and I can pick it up the next day, that kind of thing. But for your primo research help, <clears throat> excuse me, research appointments is where you want to be. It allows you in your case to set up a Zoom session and here are all the librarians listed. If you leave it at no preference so that any librarian um, can answer your questions, you notice you can get um, you know, a lot broader time. So from eight in the morning all the way to four at night, there's different appointments. If you choose me specifically <clears throat> on any given day, I might not have as open of a, a, a schedule. So it, it may be less, but I'm happy to do uh, sessions with anybody who needs one but my availability isn't going to be as, as large as all the librarians combined, right? So there's just more options when you when you leave it at uh, no preference. But that's entirely up to you, okay? So that's what I wanted to show you all. And um, I look forward to meeting some of you. I know some of you will be able to get through this with no problem without any further assistance from me. But if you do make a research appointment, I do look forward to, to meeting and helping you all. Um, reach out if you have any issues or any questions. Um, we're here to support you as, as best we can. Um, it is a little different being in an online environment, but we have so many resources now that it doesn't make a big difference, um, it, it, you know, because we can do the research appointments through Zoom. We have so many eBooks, so many e-journals. So you're really pretty much on even footing as a student who is on campus. But um, thank you for watching this video. And if you ever have any questions, look me up or look up a librarian. Appreciate your attention. Thank you. Let's see.